Hi everyone, we're Group 8 and this is our presentational video explaining all about our wind turbine, also known as the Beast. Wind turbines are a great source of renewable energy. One turbine generates the same amount of power as 16,000 solar panels. Wind power is currently the fastest growing source of electricity production in the world. Unlike nearly every other form of energy, wind power uses virtually no water. The challenge we were set was to design a one, two or three bladed wind turbine that could self-start by a wind speed of 10 meters per second. The objective of this exercise is to maximise the coefficient of power and minimise the weight. Bearing this in mind, the first decision that we embarked upon was choosing an aerofoil that would maximise the rotor torque about the hub. This is achieved by selecting for an aerofoil that produces high CLOCD, and through X4 we chose the SG6043. We considered placing a thicker aerofoil at the root, such as the FX63137, but we have had to place this less efficient aerofoil too far along the blade to be structurally useful, which would have lost us too much power. This aerofoil produces its best value for this coefficient at around 11.5 degrees. However, we opted to set the blade to an incidence of 7.5 degrees to allow for any deflection that could deform the blade and push it into stall. Since the velocity and direction of the flow varies across the span of the blade, a bent twist was applied to it to maintain incidence. We sought to maximise CP next by placing the TSR as close to the optimum as possible for both two and three blade considerations. In view of this, the TSR and number of blades were chosen after the structural analysis had been made. The stress distribution along the blade was evaluated for the forces produced centrifugally due to the angular motion of the turbine blade, as well as aerodynamically in the three geometric directions from the air passing over the blade. They were analysed using a coordinate distribution of 1 over R. The total stress was evaluated at 250 points along the blade using beam theory, and thus the stress at every spanwise millimetre was calculated. Naturally, it was found that an increase in TSR would cause the peak stress for both distributions to rise. However, an increase in material would cause this to decrease. Thus, a careful consideration had to be made for the weight caused by any additional cross-sectional area added to bear the loads imposed by aiming for a higher TSR. We found that a three-blade design would increase efficiency since it would require less weight to occupy the same solidity within the area swept by the turbine. As well as this, three-blade designs achieve better coefficients of power at lower TSRs. They are also gyroscopically better balanced. We then decided to linearly to increase the core distribution by 15%. This allowed us to design our blade to operate at a higher DSR at 4.6, closer to the optimum, at the loss of adding some weight. However, this also gave us a very large root cord length, which we decided would be beneficial to increasing the aerodynamic moment of the turbine blade when stationary, and thus decrease the self-start wind speed as well as stiffening up our blade through the addition of this cross-sectional area. This allowed us to have a tip deflection in the order of nanometers, which would eliminate any resonance due to deflection, as well as any impulsive stress, and finally eliminate any power loss that could be caused by the angle of incidence changing as a result of the deflection. The tips of the turbine blade were chosen to be elliptical to reduce any drag produced by tip vortices, whilst an ogive nose cone was opted for, since in subsonic flow, a blunt, short, smooth shape is best because it reduces the wetted area and thus the frictional drag. For the blade, we downloaded the coordinates of the airfoil SG6043 from airfoiltools.com for different chord lengths and pitch angles. We made planes in Creo that match these chord lengths to input the coordinates into, which could then be blended to create the blade. We considered very carefully which way round these coordinates needed to be in order to create a turbine and not a propeller. A small circle needed to be added around the edge that tended to zero so that it could be successfully printed. For the nose cone and hub, we found the equation of an ogive nose cone and used this to generate the coordinate for a section of the nose cone. This was then input into Creo as an extrude and rotated 360 degrees to create the nose cone. For the root, we drew a circle just inside the nose cone which was blended to the first airfoil located 50mm away from the centre of the cone. We created two ellipses which descended inside from the last airfoil towards the tip. These were then blended together to create a smooth curved tip. For our hub, 
we processed an aluminum round stock bar on the leading machine. First, we used a turning process to generate a cylindrical shape on our workpiece. A single tipped cutting tool is used to remove material from the rotating workpiece while lubricant is applied. A hole for the shaft of the wind turbine is then drilled. To achieve good accuracy, we increase the sizes of our drills gradually. To achieve good precision, we use the rimming tool to get good inner surface finish. Burrs were then removed from the edge to get rid of excess material. Next, we move on to the milling process. Using the CNC on the Siemens vertical milling machine, we keyed in the necessary data specified on the three axes. The milling process was then automatically carried out by the computer with a liberal shower of lubricant. This is what we get after machining for the six flat surfaces. We then proceed to machine the shattered hole for the graph screw. The final step before the hub is completed is the broaching process. Using a hydraulic pump, we manually cut the keyway that attaches the shaft to our hub as the turbine spins. With that, the hub of our turbine is completed. In manufacturing our blade, we used a rapid prototyping machine with ABS plastic as the material. With our 3D modeling created from Creo Parametric, the rapid prototyping machine generated the turbine blade and cone as such. We then proceed on to gluing and assembling the parts together. The glued joints were held together by clips and were left to stand before further work is done on the turbine. When the glue has set, we proceeded on to sanding the assembly. Due to the nature of the rapid prototyping process, the initial surface finish was rough and we took some time sanding down to achieve a good surface finish. Upon testing, our wind turbine successfully fulfilled its purpose. The aerodynamic moment produced by our large cord distribution became large enough to permit the turbine to self-start at just under 7 meters per second, well below the required 10. Structurally, the turbine design also held up well. Apart from not breaking, the stiff manner of the blade meant that any tip deflection was invisible to the eye, both when the blade spun and when stationary. In addition, the blade was always very quiet when in motion, which backed up our assumptions that by being stiff with much cross-sectional area, we could eliminate oscillation or any resonance effects, as well as the assumption that the range of RPMs tested would not encompass the natural frequency of our structure. Of the four wind speeds tested, our turbine generated the highest power at 12 meters per second with 48 watts or a power coefficient of 0.2235. Considering the fact that large professional wind turbines generate a maximum CP of 0.44 or 75% of the bed's limit, and also that smaller machines usually produce much less than this, we believe our design produced good power. Our estimation of performance was also quite exact. At max CP, our blade's TSR only had a 0.3 defense from the TSR of 4.6 that we designed for giving us a 93% accuracy of the calculation of that performance parameter. We believe this to be the result of our blades being stiff, which kept the turbine from deflecting away from the plane of rotation in which we made our calculations. However, our design could have been improved weight-wise. As shown earlier, the peak stresses in our blade were calculated to be in the middle of their spans, which meant that at the roots, where the stresses were smaller, we by far overcompensated the cross-sectional area required to overcome these stresses imposed on the blade. By using a more efficient taper that tailored to the loads on the blade, rather than simply applying the 1 over R cord distribution along the whole blade, could have reduced our weight and given us a better merit function. A taper along the outer third of the blade, where the majority of the power is generated, combined with a non-taper along the rest of the blade would have sufficed. Finally, the blade's root attachment to the hub could have been better designed to reduce weight, since it was primarily intended to accommodate the size of the root cord in order to reduce drag. Thank you all for watching. We hope you found this video insightful. From the Six Beauties and the Beast.